This is Dave Northey from Microsoft and I'm going to spend the next four and a bit minutes explaining to you how I use Microsoft's iSCSI target and initiator software to build my demos. So on the download center you can download the iSCSI software target 3.3 which is free to use on top of any Windows server and will let you basically create a, a storage area network for free. So you're going to need some disks and on my laptop I have a second drive uh, I'm going to use uh, which is completely empty. Uh, the more spindles the better. So if you go into the iSCSI target uh, manager itself, you can go and uh, create some virtual disks. We use VHDs everywhere. Um, and in this little slot here, I'm creating a few virtual disks. So I'm going to be using this iSCSI target um, in a cluster. So I'm going to create a quorum drive uh, and a couple of others to put my CSVs on. As far as the iSCSI target itself is concerned, you just need a few little settings here. So it needs a name. Give it my machine name. Why not? Um, and I need an IQN identifier. Um, I, never, I can never remember this syntax, so I just go and give it um, either the DNS name or the IP address, uh, and it will work it out for me. So I'll give it the DNS name of this machine, and it will come back and create that IQN for me. So there it goes. It's in there in a minute. I also need to go and specify uh, the settings of this iSCSI target. Um, who can connect to it? So there's my IQN just there. Um, and just for this, I'm doing two nodes in a cluster, uh, and I know their IP addresses. So just to demonstrate that I can do DNS names and IP addresses. So this is node one. It's just letting me know that you shouldn't be doing, you shouldn't, have, you shouldn't be letting more than one machine connect to this unless you're doing clustering. I am, so that's fine. Um, and I'm going to add the virtual hard disks that I created a minute ago to this. Uh, you can go and play with advanced, but I don't. I'll leave it by defaults. Um, that's pretty much it for setting up the um, target. Now on a, on a machine, this is one of the nodes of the cluster, I'm going to go into the iSCSI initiator, um, and it tells me that you need to start this automatically. So I say yes. I'm going to connect to my target that I've just created, Dave NR2, and it's a quick connect you can press there, which connects me to it. And if I go into volumes and devices, I can auto configure and grab everything that that machine is offering to me. So now this machine's now connected to the iSCSI target and has those three drives. If I go into device manager, not device manager, disk manager, um, you'll see that I've now connected to those drives. Now out of interest, I've cheated here a bit. The very first time you connect to those, you need to initiate the drives uh, and then you can bring them online and then you can format them. I've cheated and been there and done that before. Now as far as um, clustering is concerned, on each of the nodes of my cluster I also need to install the failover clustering feature. Um, that basically gets my node ready to go. Now you can also do the same thing on Microsoft's Hyper-V server, which is our server core version, if you like, of Windows Server. So um, slightly different, there is no UI. Um, so let's just quickly run through that because it's a if you've never seen it before, it's interesting. So the first time you install Hyper-V Server, first time you log on to it, you're going to get this fantastic um, user interface. Fantastic. Uh, basically, you plod through that list. So you give your machine a name, you join a domain if you want to, you can configure your networking stack if you're not using DHCP, uh, set your date and time. So if you, uh, just, you basically just plod your way through that, through that list. Um, I'm going to add the failover clustering feature. That's that bit done. And to connect the iSCSI uh, target I've created, I've just created a little batch file, which I'll put on the blog post just to, uh, to so you can, exp you can cheat and copy mine. And basically all this does is connect to the initiator. So it connect, starts the initiator, connects to the target, uh, grabs the drives, um, and makes sure that they uh, automatically configure themselves the next time they start. So it's kind of as simple as that to use iSCSI. Um, what I'll do in, in, in my next post is quickly explain how to build a cluster uh, using iSCSI as the target. Um, yeah, but easier than I thought. Anyway, there you go. Next time, talk to you soon.